Hey, what's up? This is Mark at Alchemist.camp, where usually we learn the Elixir programming language and the Phoenix framework by building things. But today is a Q&A session, so I'm just going to go through a number of questions I got from a viewer named Eric. First was, I really like the automation you did to create the entities and code. Is this unique to Phoenix? I believe he's talking about the series I did on making a CMS that starts with making a unified tagging system with many-to-many -many ecto relations. Most of the interesting bits that I did in this series are actually just about the database schema setups. Uh, it is true that Elixir is a very high-level language that makes some of these automations and abstractions easier, but it's not really anything you couldn't have done with, with Node or definitely with Ruby on Rails or Java, whatever setup you've got. So nothing that special for Elixir there. Second question is, would you mind explaining besides Erlang VM and OTP, which features developing with Phoenix I would have compared to Node.js, Express, Spring, Boot, uh, .NET Core? So first of all, I'll say I'm no expert with Java. I've mostly just used it for courses. I have built some things with it, but it's just never been my primary language. Um, .NET, I know even less about. I've basically just used it for a couple of cross-platform desktop apps and some Unity games that I never finished. So um, I would say the most important thing about Elixir is the Erlang VM, and OTP is a big part of that. Uh, another thing that I would say is a significant difference between Elixir and JavaScript or Java or .NET is you have to get used to working with immutable variables. It's like everything you've declared is a const. So you'll be using recursion a lot more. You'll want to get comfortable with accumulators. And you'll also be doing a lot of pattern matching, which might be familiar to you if you've worked with either Scala or f -sharp. And the other notable thing to point out is just that it's a high-level language. So as well as the things you're used to, you'll, you'll also have full-blown macro system, which you don't actually have to understand that well to build Phoenix apps with, although to make a framework like Phoenix, you would definitely have to understand how macros work very well. Um, you've also got protocols, which uh, are another high-level abstraction. So there, there's a bit of difference. I, I don't think the transition will be too hard as long as you've worked with uh, a few languages before and, and you don't mind learning a few new concepts. Next question. Do you have videos deploying Phoenix? I heard this is the worst part compared to those three languages. Is it that hard? No, I actually, this is a really frustrating thing I hear come up a lot that for some reason deployment is difficult with Elixir. I don't understand it at all. Uh, there, there are a lot of options of how to do deployment with Elixir. And that's because Elixir has some interesting properties due to it being on the Erlang VM. Like it's possible to do hot upgrades where you don't even stop the server as you upgrade it. Or you could have a server running on many different nodes and cascade the upgrade through them. Um, there, there are actually an amazing number of things you can do without shutting down the VM. But you can't do that with other languages. Like say you've got a Ruby on Rails app or you've got you know, Python Flask app, you're not going to be doing a hot upgrade there. So you're basically comparing a Dockerized deploy system with Phoenix versus one with Node or Rails or Django or whatever. And it's equally easy. You do the same kind of setup. And in all of those cases, it destroys the application state. So there are some things you could do with Erlang VM, like not have the application's memory be disrupted by doing an upgrade, but you can't do those things with those other languages anyway, so you lost nothing. If you do want some of those special capabilities like hot upgrades, or say you don't even want to use a traditional database and you want to store all of the data related to your application in memory distributed across all the, the nodes your app is running on, then there are other ways you can do it. Um, similarly, uh, if you're used to working with Nginx as a reverse proxy in front of your, your server, uh, which you pretty much always would do with Rails or Python or Node because of performance reasons, among others, 
Um, you can do that with Phoenix, or you can have Elixir serving the app directly and do it without a node reverse proxy. And that's because it's very performant. In fact, the Cowboy web server, which uh, Phoenix builds on top of, is what Heroku uses as their entry point for all of the ridiculous amounts of traffic they're getting. So you have options. Um, there's, there are also some tools built into Elixir to help you with deployment. Um, like uh, you can build releases with something called Distillery. You can also use another tool called eDeliver to send those releases to your server. I do have videos that cover this. They are a bit long though, and include some bits with me struggling with uh, VirtualBox. I was running a VM on my old Windows machine before I knew about uh, WSL, which lets you run Ubuntu on your Windows machine and is, is actually very well integrated with the system. So I'm, I'm gonna make some more videos about deployment. Um, just to give you an idea of what I'm doing, um, I'll just change something on Alchemist Camp now. So I've got two episodes with a game tag running locally. And you can see if I click on game, it doesn't show which one is pro and which, which one isn't. Uh, similarly, if I were to go to this CMS series, well, actually all of those are, are free. This one, okay, so the chat server series has some pro episodes and some that aren't. So let's say I wanna add some sort of information here so you can see from the, uh, the tag listing well, I've already done that off screen and I'm gonna paste the code into my template and save that so we can see running locally. Now it says pro and it's grayed out and I've got a link to the subscribe page if someone clicks that. Here's the work that it takes me to deploy. I stop my server and then I commit it or I add, thing, add it to git, I commit, I'll say uh, shows which episodes are premium in tagged view. And once that's done, I just push it up to uh, my server, which is on GitLab. And as long as the tests pass, anything pushed to master or merge to master will be deployed automatically. So I can see it running in the GitLab CI CD right now. And once that's done, it will be deployed. And I'm just gonna go on and answer the next question now. Do you teach everything about Phoenix and Elixir? So I would have enough knowledge to build full secure websites, APIs like I would with those mentioned frameworks. Node, Spring, and .NET have a lot of books and tutorials, so it's easy to be proficient. Your site would be enough knowledge to build a full CMS like WordPress with SEO, etc. Okay, well that's kind of a, a tall order, but let me see. Uh, I do not teach everything about Phoenix and Elixir. I'm teaching as much as I can, as quickly as I can, but this is a side project. I, you know, I, I do not live off of Alchemist Camp by any means, not even close. So, uh, you know, I'm doing what I can. Most of what I put out there is free. You will not have enough knowledge to do everything, but you can build a full secure website. In fact, the security uh, portions of the episodes, like uh, um, logging in with a password or, or those kinds of things, are all based off of official guides and things that uh, people make working on the core of Phoenix or Elixir have shared. So um, you can do that. Um, you can definitely learn how to make an API. I don't know that you could clone WordPress just off of what I've taught though. Um, I, do, I do have a few things on SEO, like how to set up uh, meta tags was one of the uh, uh, one of the things in the CMS series. I'll just open that up over here. Um, this episode will will help you uh, um, do some optimizations you need for like uh, uh, making sure that you can change your meta tags per page and and that you uh, uh, can also set up images for Facebook and other social networks. Um, so yeah, it's 
it's something, but I, this shouldn't be your only resource. Like my, my hope with Alchemist Camp is that by building full projects, you get an idea for what's out there. You'll discover some things you would never even have looked for. If say, if you just had a site that lists language features, you might not know why you want a certain feature or why you'd want to use a certain uh, plugin or something like that. So, um, my goal is to give you an idea of what's out there, get you started and point you to the docs and help you learn how to use the docs and uh, then get to where you can build whatever you want. But even after you can build whatever you want, you might still want to check in and, and uh, um, see if I've explored part of the territory that you haven't. So with that said, let's look at how our deploy went. Looks like it is still running. So the way this deploy works, I'll just go over that really quickly. I've got a, a GitLab CI set up, just a YAML file. And you can see my test database settings here. And GitLab actually does fire up a Docker container and it builds everything needed for my app on it. It runs my tests. Then if those tests pass, then it deploys to master, it deploys if the tests pass and it was on the master branch, then it deploys to production. And I've got a, a little trick in here to uh, um, get the SSH key out of uh, um, the project variables on GitLab. So that's, uh, that's really about it. And every, if everything is fine, then it uses eDeliver to send everything up to production. So actually um, I'm deploying from a Docker container built on GitLab CI, and I'm using standard Elixir tools so that if I do want to do a hot upgrade, I can. And uh, uh, you know none of those options are lost. So I waited a few minutes and now it's passed. Looks like the total build took 13 minutes. And if I refresh this, you can see the change is live in production. We'll full screen that just for effect. So as you can see, deploying is not really that hard. Um, there are a lot of different ways you can do it, but you just have to pick one and get it set up. And after that, you're pretty much fine. So if you're interested in uh, how to set up eDeliver and do basically the same thing I'm doing here. I will make a future video on that topic, or if you don't want to wait until then, you can look at the videos from about a year ago. As usual, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed it, like it and subscribe so you get more of it. See you next time.